Okay, so we've played with flat color. I'm gonna turn off all my layers so you can see how it builds. Right. So we've played with just flatting and then choosing specific flat colors. And then augmenting those flat colors with duotones both hard-edged and soft-edged in different spots. We brought in some um, full-spectrum gradients. And then some little details. Let's see, I might want to soften these up just slightly. So go to blur, Gaussian blur. Just soften them up a little bit. But then if you soften them, but then they get too dull, what you can do is soften them and then duplicate them. And that will bolden them up. Right. Then, of course, we can always merge them back together. And you can always use levels and brighten that way. using individual gradients on different things. I like how it works in most places. See, I'm gonna soften this a little bit. Maybe not. Okay. Um, on the fork, I'm gonna use auto select layer. Yeah, see what this gradient is doing. I'm gonna play with this gradient a little bit. Change these colors a little bit. That's not where this one. Yeah, so that, that's more subtle. Then I might also take individual parts and we're just kind of refining and finishing off. And I can blend bring a little bit more light into it. You do that with these highlights as well. Let's duplicate that and give it some sort of gradient. Yeah, so that's starting to work. Now the blue is out of the teeth. Okay, so now we have special effects. I don't have much going on in the eye, right? And look at this one. This is a nice new version. You see how it has that, that little highlight over the pupil, right? So that is what's called a color hold. And you also notice how the color of certain things, are it's not black, it's different colors. So I'm gonna start um, with the special effect that's most common in spot illustration, which are color holds. And this is where you take your outline and you change its color, or you do stuff on top of it. So I'll do just the most basic color hold first. I'll make a layer on top of my vector outline, and I'll call it color hold effects. And then what I'm simply going to do, I'll do exactly what they did. <laughs> I'll make a little white circle. Hold down shift, make it a perfect circle, right? Then I'm going to fill it in with white. And then that is a color hold. It's just a little white circle, but it's on top of my black line work. So the printer has to hold the ink in that spot so that black doesn't fill it. That's why it's called a color hold. Now I can take the opacity down and let it actually affect what's underneath. And that's pretty, pretty effective. It's not quite in the right place for my illustration. Let me move it to a place that would be more effective, like right there. Okay, where are some other places I can use this? If I duplicate that layer, 
I can use this as a special effect on the fork, right? To show that it's shiny. I can bring the opacity up, make it larger. And I can Gaussian blur it more and more. Right? Make it larger, stretch it out, tilt it. Maybe like that, and then take its opacity down. Does it affect the, the outline, or does it go underneath the outline? It's on top of the outline, it affects it. So it is a color hold. I'm going to use soft light just to minimize it a little bit, right? So it's not quite so strong. I can duplicate that one, bring it up here, and then bring up its opacity, right? To kind of soften the brow a little bit. Does it affect the outline underneath? It certainly does, right? Okay, so those are one type of color hold effect. Another type is to simply duplicate all of your vector outline and then just give it a color overlay. So what if I went kind of dark blue, a midnight blue instead of black, at 100% opacity? That feels pretty different. In fact, I think I want to go a little bit lighter. Maybe like that, right? And then maybe I want to take that opacity down a little bit so that the black comes through, but then add a gradient overlay to that line work. And I'll just do a straight light to dark gradient overlay. Or warm to cool. Light to dark works pretty well. Play with the scale of it. I have it on pin light right now. I just did it normal, be a little stronger. Try soft light. Doesn't make much of a difference, so pin light it is. Yeah, so it's just subtle. Definitely affects it. Now, what if I want, like this has, the bull to have a different outline than the horns. Like I like that outline for the horns. So this is where it gets a little trickier. You have to um, select around your line work where you want it. So let's do it loosely here just to show you. Remember, Photoshop is all about good selections. Then you duplicate that line work just from that one selection. It will no longer be a smart object. Then you can change your gradients and your color overlays as you wish. Right? So I can make the bull's head a different color. Like that. That has a nice effect. I might like that enough that I do it for the bottom part. But not for the type, just for the bull. So it's tricky.
I don't want to change the outline on the fork or the teeth, just the bowl. <coughs> Not the top of the R, just the bowl. All right, then I duplicate that. And then, this is my little trick, duplicate the effect I want and then just drag that effect on. You see how it matches it? It's nice. Then I might take this opacity down a little bit. Yeah. So I think that works well for the horns and for the bull. Um, maybe that color hold. Maybe put that one of those on the horn, make a duplicate of it. Make it bigger. You can make little stars too if you want. Gouge and blur it. Gouge and blur it some more. I was going to blur it some more. Stretch it. Tilt it. Bop it. Spin it. I don't know, this can get overdone. I'm probably overdoing it. Yeah, I'm overdoing it. Okay, maybe for the text, I can play with that outline a little differently. So for the most part, it's easy. It's only difficult where it overlaps with, an, with part of the illustration, the other line art. Like with the fork, that fork and fork. But otherwise, pretty easy to select all the line art just around the text. Got our color holds working. So now, take that from my vector layer, duplicate it. Play with the gradient, maybe try a different angle on it. Maybe not have a gradient on it. Instead, just color overlay it, but with a different color overlay. So let's see what would work well. Something bright and strong. Maybe try that with the gradient. That works. And then, of course, I can give it a stroke. And we'll be dealing with this when we deal with type more. Yeah, I like the lighter, actually. But instead of an outside stroke, because I don't want it to affect the rest, I can do it as an inside or as a center. You know, so you can try out different things. If you don't want it as a stroke, you can do it as a inner shadow. That works well. And even as a drop shadow. Get some 